Welcome back to Roosters Radio. And well, Roosters fans, we've got a real treat for you right now. He's actually making hey, he's actually making his debut on Roosters Radio for the very first time. He's been at the club for four years now, which it's gone quick, I tell you what. Uh, he's in scintillating form at the moment. Scored his first try in first grade a few weeks back. He was actually the Roosters Junior Player of the Year in 2020. And to talk about his arrival on the scene this year, the one and only Nafahu White. Fahu, Hello. welcome to the Roosters. Thank Radio. you, thank you, welcome. thank you. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I'm going to say, me and Bells are doing our research, trying to, you know, find out a little bit more about you. We don't really talk too much football on this yeah, podcast. Yeah. It's more about learning a bit more about the player and... Mate, you're a man of mystery. There's not much yeah, about yeah. you. Yeah, no, I keep it low key. I keep it pretty low key. <laughs> this will be interesting. We're, yeah, so. we're going to pull it out. You watch. <laughs> but I think from a Roosters uh, point of view, it'd be really interesting to know how you arrived at the club. We know um, you were a pretty handy r- both rugby league and union player back in New Zealand. Yeah. Um, so tell us the story, mate, of how you became a Rooster. Yeah, so um, yeah, obviously did my schooling back in New Zealand. Um, was there from 2015 to 2019, and I, I sort of went on a rugby rugby scholarships thing. So um, league at the time was only part time. So um, yeah, throughout my whole schooling year, I was only playing um, union, and then all the way out throughout to my until my last year. So um, only time I got to play league was uh, the representative. So that was the only time I really got to play um, league, and I was actually playing center. So I was <laughs> playing outside backs there, and um, yeah, obviously little tournaments here and there, and then. Um, yeah, obviously got picked up there and um, yeah, the rest of history is just sort of transition from there. Uh, moved over in uh, 2020 um, to play SG ball and um, yeah, staying at the house with um, a few of my close mates and yeah, just sort of started the journey from there. Just tell us as a young kid growing up in Auckland, uh, you know, going through high school, I know Mills Mualaina Mills Mualaina went to your school. Yeah. Being a centre, mate, was the dream to be an All Black? Yeah, it's, al- it's always a dream of a, a young Polynesian, New Zealander kid to always be an All Black. Um, you watch them every week and, um, you know, you always aspire yourself to be there one day. And obviously that was a dream of mine playing Union. I was um, to go through uh, all the tracks there and hopefully play there. But, um, you know, it, uh, your career doesn't always turn out how you plan it to be. And, um, you know, this opportunity arised for me and I sort of took it from, um, with both hands and, yeah, never looked back from there. So... So how did the opportunity arise? Like, how do you leave Auckland as, as a teenager and, yeah. and, you know, land yourself in, in Bondi for yeah. the Roosters? How, how did that all work out? Yeah, no, it was, um, yeah, it was a really mysterious journey there. It was obviously, it just popped up and you know, I had to go through management and stuff and I obviously accepted the deal. And, um, yeah, next year after that, and then I was already moving over to Australia on my own. So, um, yeah, it was, it was pretty crazy, you know, just having to you know, be your own man and find your own feet and you, know, you kind of just leave all your family behind and kind of have to go mm. out there on your own. So it was a, it was a tough, uh, tough track there, but I was grateful to have, um, you know, some really close mates with me at the time and it sort of just made the journey so easy for me. And, you know, we, as, a, as a collective, as us boys, we were just um, aspiring to achieve our dream and, um, yeah, go from there. So. Yeah, it must have been tough. I've got a 23-year-old and I can't imagine him doing that at 19. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it must yeah. have been tough. No, yeah. But your parents, they're back in Auckland. Yeah, um, yeah. so all my family is still back in Auckland. Um, i got my own little family now, so they keep me um, they keep me on my toes there and keep me busy every day, which I'm grateful for. But, um, yeah, back at that time, um, yeah, just leaving family just like that. No, no mom, no dad, mm. no one to rely on but yourself, so... Yeah, the cooking skills must have yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What did you eat? <laughs> had to come out from somewhere, but it was fast food for a couple of weeks there. But yeah, nah, it was good. And so you just mentioned you've got your own family now. Yeah. Uh, tell us about it. What 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 yeah, is that for you? I got my partner Hope and um, my beautiful little daughter Talia. So mm. um, yeah, we we'll, we'll, I was grateful to have them, and you know they 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 were my you know something to lean back on. You know they were my go to when I went back home because I remember back then it was me just going home to all the boys again and I kind of just yeah. everyone just started just doing their own things but um you know it just keeps me on my toes every day and you know it gets my mind off footy you know thinking about footy all the time is uh, not really something that I want to do and um yeah going back home and spending time with them is um yeah something I'm really grateful for and, and you yeah. met Hope here 
uh, Mayor back in New Zealand. Oh, back so, in New Zealand. Yeah. So she's back over here with you. Yeah, so we're all to back here together. Wow, now, so. beautiful, beautiful. Mate, you touched on something a bit earlier where you, you talked about your, your heritage, your Polynesian heritage, and we've spoken to a few of the Polynesian boys lately. Uh, yeah. You know, Spencer Lenyu in particular. When you see Spencer hit the field, as, you, as you've seen, the eyes roll in the back yeah, of the head, yeah. and the guy that you, you sit there and interview is completely different. But yeah. the role that family play, uh, yeah. particularly with Polynesian players, right? The fact that you're by yourself and you haven't got that network around you, who do you lean on? Yeah, um, yeah. obviously, like I said before, you know, I had, I had the boys there, and they were, they were really close boys. They were kind of boys that I grew up playing with. They were basically my like my brothers. Yeah. So mm. it was really good to have them there, could have leaned on them. I had um, uh, one of my uh, one of my family friends, uh, his name is Fita. Yeah. yeah, he was here for us at the time too. So he was always checking, on up, uh, checking up on us um, every now and then while we were here. But um, yeah, I think, I think for me, it was, it was mainly just my personal self, my own self, just trying to find my own feet. You know, it was good. Like it's a it's a blessing in disguise, you know. You're away from your family, but it's also a good way for you to build your character and um, you know kind of find your feet and be your own man and kind of like just be in the real world, you know. Yeah. You just not not out here, you know, just like oh looking for mom or looking for dad to <laughs> help you out and stuff. Yep. But like yeah, when you when you kind of come in the real world, you just gotta be your own man at times. So you, you came in and you, you had a cracking first year, like 2020 Junior Player of the Year. The following year, you get graded. Yeah. Um, you know, make your debut in 2021 against the Broncos. And I can remember, I was just saying this off air, I remember a couple of weeks after you made your debut watching you play against the Bulldogs at Waverley Oval. Mm. Um, you got beat that day, but you, I suppose your rise to first grade, it, it happened pretty quick. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, you must have pinched yourself. and No doubt your family would have been super proud and I, pre I suppose you are pretty shocked at how quick it all came to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was obviously... Um no, SG Board 2020, and then the next year you, you're you straight into grade. So, um, yeah, I was just grateful for that opportunity there. Um, talking about that Bulldogs game, it, it was kind of like, even though it was um, like my age group and everything, but it was, it was kind of like a downfall for me. So, um, yeah, like obviously I wasn't performing where I wanted to be. I wasn't, um, you know, playing like I would like to play and then obviously resulted in me playing there. But, um, you know, like for myself this year, it's just, um, giving me the inspiration to, you know, keep going harder and trust the process. So I had to come in this preseason and, uh, like, put my head down and just work hard, you know, just... And then, obviously, now opportunities are rising yeah. for me and, um, yeah, I'm just kind of taking it with both hands and doing, <laughs> doing what I can. So. Well, let's talk about this year because Bells, Bells has got a question that, that I think a lot of the Roosters fans Definitely. have to ask and it's about the footwork, mate. Oh, man. <laughs> I was going to ask, like, obviously, you... Um, Kelston... Kelston Boys High, yep. sports captain there. Yep. Uh, and did you do athletics, mate? Because you've got the fastest feet for a, for a, for a big fellow. You <laughs> just so you can turn it on a dime. So yeah. it, did you do anything like that during school as a junior? No, nah, I actually wasn't. Um, I was a centre. Yeah, yeah, like, true. yeah part, part of that plays. I was a yeah. centre. And um, But like, if I was to be completely honest with you, when I was little, uh, growing up, I had my uncle. So his name his name's Matthew White. And um, right, like, every time, like probably since I was like three years old, like me and him at the back, in the backyard one-on-one -on -one and, you know, who has the best footwork. He, he's like 10 years older than me though, but like, you know, me and him, I was always going up against him, trying to beat him with footwork and stuff. And, you know, he kind of taught me, yeah. you know, little steps yep. and that. Um, but like whilst I was still a little kid and obviously stayed with me there. And um, yeah, I'm just, I think I'm just blessed with, with footwork. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't really Does, he <laughs> Does he claim it now? Does he? Yeah, yeah, he claimed that he said it was all, he said it's all him. So. All his <laughs> and what about other footballers? Like, do you, is it like a Sonny Bill or, or someone from back in the, in the day that you model your, your style of running on? Um, no, no, if, if I was to compl be completely honest, not really. No. Um, I sort of want to, you know, be my own style and stuff. Um, but like I like back then, um, Siwa, Siwa Taukiaho. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, I think he a similar style again. Another, yeah, yeah, great on his feet. Yeah. yeah he, big man. Yeah. Watching him growing up, he 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 was similar to, you know, like attributes and stuff like stepping footwork. You know, he was kind of he kind of had it all with the size, speed, and everything. So, um, yeah, he he was also someone you know uh, I looked up to when he was here. So, kind of just bad mentor like, at all. No, he's never, he's never, a top yeah. bloke, Siwa. Mate, you're in the squad now, and there's uh there's so many good forwards, yeah. you know, in the squad. Yeah. I've asked this of a few of the players, but there's this friendly rivalry amongst the group yeah, where yeah. 
you're pushing yourself each and yeah, every yeah, week. Yeah, but yeah. You, you're having an amazing standout year. Yourself and Terrell May, the impact you guys are having off the bench. I love watching you guys come on, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. And I suppose the question is, like, at training, are you guys, like, pushing each other to be better each and every week? Yeah, like, what, yeah. What's the dynamic like at training? Because we see the results on the field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, um, you know, Roosters has, has one of the best forward packs out here, young and old. Yeah. So, um, yeah, teammate there, he's a beast, bro. Um, <laughs> Seawall's a beast. Dilly's a beast. Obviously, you know, everyone knows Jared. He knows what he can do. So, you know, everyone, um, it, it's a fr friendly rivalry, but it's also something that makes us better as a collective. Um, we always battle each other out there, uh, whatever it may be, you know, just running hard at each other, trying to tackle hard. And, um, you know, it's obviously showing out there with how we've been oh, performing absolutely. lately. And, um, Definitely. Yeah, that's, it, it, it's, it's, it's a good rivalry. It's yeah. a good rivalry. No one takes it too hard, you know, like after training or whatever, it's a shake hands, it's a, it's a good solid session, boys, and it's uh, get get better. You know what's interesting, Fahu, from the from the grandstands, I've said this a couple of times, even on the show. Sometimes, and I think about the Warriors game in particular. I think about even the game against the Dogs. We look like we're running harder mm. yeah, and yeah. tackling harder than yeah, the opposition. Yeah. Like you know, we're, we're always going to be we're mm. making a lot of inroads through the middle, and it's, it's off the back of players like yourself and Jared and all, and all those other guys, but. It just looks like we're running harder. Yeah, yeah. You know? And I suppose that's what's happening at training. Yeah, it's obviously, um, you know, as, as a forward pack, we always talk about mentality. Um, we always we always choo um, they have that mentality to go after other forward packs. So we always try to be dominant over them. And that's that's always going to be through our power running. Everyone's powerful in our forward pack. You know, you got yeah. speed, you got power, you got everything. So um, we're just using it to our advantage and, and playing our style of footy. And, um, yeah, not only an attack, but defense too. So we're, we're going after teams there. And, um, and obviously for myself personally, I'm still I'm still working on that. It may seem like it's it's, it's at its peak, but like you know, I'm I'm still far from um, where I wanna where I wanna be as a player, both on attack and uh, mainly my defense. So mm. yeah, as a, so uh, exciting. Yeah. Still working on it. I'm I pumped. It. I can't that's wait. A, that's a that's a great <laughs> thing. Uh, what would be your preferred position? Like their second row. You know, you've played a bit of everything out yeah, there. Yeah. What what's your preferred position? Uh, well, I actually don't mind. You don't if mind. I, to be honest, red, um, white, and blue jersey. Yeah, just, just get out whatever, there. Whatever I can to to wear that jersey. I'm just yeah, I'm just grateful to put that on every week and um, you know, every opportunity I get, I just go out and do what I can do best, you know, and um, do best for the team. And, you know, I don't see it as my jersey. It's always, uh, it's just like a jersey that's yeah. there. And, you know, anyone can claim it at any time, but um, whatever I can to uh, keep putting that on every week is my goal. So There's another jersey that you're probably pretty keen to put on. You've actually tried it on, <laughs> but had number 18 on it, right? Yes. <laughs> but, mate, you must be, you must be excited about probably end of the year and yeah. what happens there. Surely you're in the mix. Is that is that probably the... the I mean, if you, do you set it? Do you set goals at the start of the year? You go right. I want to be in the first grade squad. Yeah. I want to be in the start seventeen, yeah, and then yeah. the big one is you know represent your country, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, last year was a, a big uh, wide open uh, eye opener for me to you know put on that jersey. It's it's where I'm from. It's it's where I grew up, and um, yeah, that's that's where my childhood has always yeah. been. So mm. um, to p put it on, even even though I didn't get to play, it was just. It's just stuck with me from that point on and um yeah obviously this year is, is a goal of mine to put that jersey on and actually play in the jersey and um you know like yeah it, like i said like it, it was a goal of mine from the start and i'm just slowly chipping away at them goals from like preseason, um trying to make the team and then obviously trying to play consistently. keep, keep playing the way you're playing <laughs> i'm you'll sure you'll yourself. have that yeah, yeah hopefully, you'll hopefully. have that jersey on at the end of the year and that'll be exciting to watch you yeah, yeah. run out there for for your country yeah before earlier you mentioned family and that was what you you go to away from football yeah. is there anything else what else do you like doing outside of football uh, nah, I'm, I'm pretty chill there <laughs> I don't really like any, <laughs> I don't really like any around um you know much stuff outside I just like chilling at home with my family or calling my family back at home yes. back in New Zealand or just the boys haven't tried to get you out in the surf on a board or golf golf golf, golf yeah golfers, golf golf's yeah. a big one there all and, of the, us, and the gamers all of, it, all of yeah. a sudden uh, boys are starting to golf so yeah I can see um, on the on their Instagram yes. pages I don't, I, don't, <laughs> I don't think I have the patience to, even <laughs> <laughs> to stand there for 18 holes or whatever it may be so um, but hopefully one day I'll go and give it a try with the boys but um yeah family is everything for me and um you know without them I wouldn't be here today mm. so Beautiful, mate. Beautiful. Mate, Sunday night, we take on the Tigers. They've yep. won two in a row. Yep. Uh, you know, if we were having this interview four weeks ago, we would have thought it was a walk in the park. But, yep. you know, under Benji, mm. the, they found a bit of form. Adam Dewey back. Yep. What do we need to do to beat them on Sunday night? Um, 
yeah, really just need to do what we do. Um, mm. um, we don't go away from, it's, it's nothing different this week. It's still uh, run hard, tackle hard, play hard. So, um, yeah, we, we've kind of just finished up our review with uh, the doggies. And, um, yeah, now we're looking forward to um, the Tigers boys on um, Sunday Sunday evening. Yeah, 6 yeah. o'clock. Six yeah, six Sunday nine. evening. But, um, yeah, obviously they're on a good track there. Um, you know, we never you never underestimate any team. No matter where they sit on the ladder or how they've been playing, you know, they if they turn up to play, then they're, they're a tough team to beat. So, um, yeah, we're, we're not underestimating what they can do, but we're definitely not going away from, you know, what we want to do and how we want to dominate. So, Well, that's the key word, dominate. Definitely. Fahu, it's been an absolute pleasure meeting you, mate. Yeah, uh, really enjoyed the chat. Really love it. And I speak on behalf of all Roosters fans. Yeah. We love how you're playing, mate. So sure. continue to play well. And uh, I guarantee you, you'll be wearing that, all, uh, well, not the all black, but the, uh, the, the black jumper at the end of the year, mate. Yeah, but best yeah. of luck and continue doing what you're doing. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thanks awesome. for joining us on Roosters Radio, mate. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>